That's a male. Right on. Nice one. That ain't no little baby. Mm -mm. Right <laughs> We got one on the line here. Whoo, he's a fighter. Another beautiful male. Get him. Big melt. You're gonna be eating good. I don't know if we're gonna be eating good. I was gonna say maybe it's for <laughs> My school maybe eating good. Cool fish. Anna done caught us some bait. Look how beautiful it golden is. Golden shiner. Can you see it? Sorry. I <laughs> got interrupted by a fish. <laughs> Ooh, he's a fighter. <laughs> he's a fighter, baby. Woo. There he is. All right, this is what we're after right here. These size big old slab shell crackers. I don't know if you can tell perspective, but the tip of my fingers right there and it runs up my sleeve that's probably a pounder maybe a little over a pound shell cracker that's what we want all right anna's baiting up here we just got red worms right here and she's gonna take the hook and start basically in the bottom or middle of the worm um i start in the middle but she's just gonna thread that on the hook like that it's okay to have dangling worm on there. But the key to these shell cracker down here where we're at is they don't like to see the hook tip. Mm -hmm. They will not bite it if the hook tip is showing. Some of you may not believe that, but it's tested and and true. Mm -hmm. uh, Anna will tell you when we first met, she didn't get it at first. Nope. But then once we started covering that hook tip, hook up ratios increased. I'm looking at your bubbles. Let's see if we can keep this one in the boat. You shut the dirty mouth. <laughs> Get him in the boat. He's not off the hook. <laughs> We're not. He's one fish. There we go. Nice big shell cracker. Far enough from the edge now. <laughs> yeah. We can show him off a little bit. Nice one, honey. Real nice. Real up. All right, redemption time. So it's going to make it into the line. It's going to make it into the line. Well, that's a nice one. Look at that. I've got where to report. All right, we just got a double. She's got one. I didn't have I to rip his one. guts out. Yes, that's always good. Look how big his mouth is. Yeah, I'm gonna stand it. right here. Down Look at him. In its mouth. And I got one too, not quite as big. Oh, and we're using these brim busters or cane poles, whatever you want to call them. Some people think there's no technique to a pole. Let me catch this fish. <laughs> there is a little technique to it. There he is. The smaller one. Did you see the grass attached to him right there? That shows you that he's up in the weeds. 
So th that grass is stuck to his scales right there. So they are up in there, probably uh, trying to hide from the high tide. So maybe when the tide goes out, we'll tear them up a little better. So before I was interrupted by that shell cracker, the technique I was talking about, especially when you got too much line on your uh, pole like I do, you just kind of want to swing it. If you can get, keep that line tight and swing it, you can pretty much aim it right into wherever you want to go. Um, if you have a shorter line like Anna's, you can kind of cast it over your shoulder or do the technique that she just did, would you just flip it in there. But I got way too much line, so I kind of have to pendulum swing it into the spot. <laughs> Anna's got a nice one. We don't know how many this is. It's probably getting close to 20. It'd be 22 if I kept two of them in the boat. you would be all right. <laughs> this is a good one. Mm-hmm. Ooh. <laughs> a good shot. See, this one didn't even take it down. He just hit it and barely pulled it back. Swallowed the hook. Apparently, I threw this hook under the fish and it caught him on the belly. It counts because we're eating them. I'm going to try a little rod and reel fishing, see if I can get one of these big shell crackers on this ultralight here. Mm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's a nice one. Wow. Oh. That's a two pound test. <laughs> All right. That's awesome. That's a big freaking fish. That's a big one. That is a big one. Mm. Mm, there we go. <laughs> Yay, you one down. There we go. Let's go fight it. <laughs> I don't have egg, but it's so nice. Yeah, really good. They're so pretty. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. She got a good one. Shark. Oh. <laughs> nice one. Is that a male? Yeah, that's a male. Okay. He's just not one of them giant ones. Oh, okay. His belly just looked like... Mm -hmm. Oh, look. Yeah, that ain't pee. Oh, it's not? <laughs> what is it? How oh. a baby's made. Never mind. <laughs> well, he ain't gonna be making no babies now. Are you sure? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. Oh, Lincoln's hooked up. There he is. Monster cracker. There he is. Anna's got one now. Another monster crackle. Look at that. Whoa. Hold him up for the people, Daddy. Nice, nice. Another big one. Yeah, go! That's your biggest one of the day, right yeah, there. Yeah, that's my biggest one. That's a monster. Let's get that one on the boat. That thing looks like one of them Oscar fish. It does. Look how big it is. You know it's big when you got to pin it to your chest to get the hook out. <laughs> how big that thing is. <laughs> I'm not letting it go. No, she she don't want to lose it. Straight four in. more. We need four <laughs> more to get. Look at that. Woo! 60 shell cracker right there. Whip. All right, we're gonna clean these fish. Now these big ones you can fillet. 
and uh, get a good bit of meat out of it. So we're gonna do a fish fry with these fish for a whole group of teachers. So we want the most meat possible on the bone. So we're gonna do it the old fashioned way. We use a big spoon. We need a knife, of course a hose. We got two uh, containers full of water. One to clean all the remnants of the guts out and one to clean it up ready for the bag. Got gallon sized bags and we'll put about eight fish in each bag, double bag it and then fill the inside bag up with water. Lay it flat on the freezer and that way that fish freezes in that water. Lastly, you need a gut bucket. All right, so I'm gonna get a few fish out, three or four. Get three or four out so I don't have to keep opening up the cooler. All right, first things first, uh, we're gonna lay them out. Start from the tail. Just take that spoon at an angle and run it up. You get a bunch of scales in your spoon. Just kind of work it up to the head of the fish like this. You can use a fish scaler if you have one. I don't know where mine is, so we're using the spoon. The spoon works pretty good though on the big ones. Make sure you get your belly. I'm wearing gloves because you can get spined a lot. And although it only hurts for a second, the next day or when you get in the shower, it hurts a lot. Make sure to flip it over, get the other side. I'm gonna cut off back behind this fin here uh, try to round it off here. So you want to get all the scales up near that area. Some people like to leave the heads on and cook them with the heads on and just gut them. That's not us. We don't really care for that. And we're cooking them for people that may not eat fish all the time. So seeing a head on a fish can be a little traumatizing as well. And all right, so I've gone through, got all the scales up. It's all smooth. That's step number one. I'm going to take your knife, and uh, you can, if you want to be really precise, you can just pull this fin up and kind of cut round it like this. I've done it for so long that I kind of know where to go. I'm just going to stop up, start up right here behind this first dorsal fin. Just cut it straight down, just like that. And if you need to go uh, catfishing, that's great catfish bait. All right, next step, you want to stick your knife in the cavity there. And take the tip out of the uh, vent slice that open take your thumb go in and grab all them guts pull them out make sure you get all the sinew out that you can then there's a heart in there yeah so you're gonna take your thumb and just press it up and uh, that'll get that heart out of there and then what Anna will do is stick it in that bucket right there and she'll clean it up real good we'll show you that step next all right she's gonna take that fish dunk it in the water there and this rest is just common sense you know you're just gonna clean it out you want to get all the guts out of there clean the hole that's what anna just hole. clean the butthole <laughs> and she's got her spoon here too in case she finds any scales that need to come up Usually I do pretty good, but you may miss one or two here and there. And it ain't gonna kill you to eat a scale. What we'll do is we'll batter and fry these uh, in a pan. When you do fry them up, you're gonna wanna score the big ones. These are moderate sized ones, but we have some monsters in here. And uh, those you wanna kinda score three strikes down like the, the side. Show them like kinda where to score it. Yeah. Boop. On the thickest parts. Yeah, on the thick parts right there for the thick boys. Thick boy. As you see, if you look at it head on, lift it up a little bit. Right there. That's a good bit of meat right there. And that's why I don't care to fillet it too much. Because they don't have too much meat on them. Um, but if you do it this way, people can usually get more off the bone. All right, then she sticks it in her clean tub. And that'll stay in there till we get a good mess of them. And then we'll bag them up. We'll show you that when we get there. All right, so this is what the bag looks like. Full, we got water in there, and we're gonna go lay it in the freezer for consumption at a later date. So 
We hope you enjoyed it. Hit that thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button and share it out. Until next time, happy, happy fishing. fishing.